beautiful thing about an indiscriminate sell-off is it's like a bucket of cold water dumped on the hottest stocks in the market. And even if today's bounce, the red hots are still down dramatically from the recent highs. Take one of my faves, Beyond Meat. That's the maker of plant-based burger and sausage alternatives that came public last spring, immediately soared to the stratosphere, climbing to 239 late July. Okay, that was too high. Before the market turned against turbocharged growth stocks, thing plunged to $71 in December. But then we started getting more good news. McDonald's expanded its pilot program for the, what we call Mercedes Burgers in Canada, and the stock got a new lease of life. A couple of weeks ago, Beyond Meat was back at 126. Last week, though, Beyond Meat got pulverized, and it's not just because of the coronavirus. On Thursday night, the company reported what I guess the analysts called mixed results. Uh, their sales were much better than expected, up 212% year over year. The earnings were a little light for according to their numbers. More importantly, uh, even though management gave incredibly bullish revenue guidance for the full year, the margin forecast was on the softer side. And they talked about sacrificing near-term profits to focus on aggressive growth, which is what I want. Freaked out some investors, though, and didn't help that the stock market was rolling over. So Beyond Me plummeted 15% on Friday. We're making up some of those losses today. I think the estimates maybe got ahead of themselves because three of these results look pretty good. So at $96, is this thing worth picking at? Hey, let's check in with Ethan Brown, the founder, president, and CEO of Beyond Meat, and a real visioner to get a better read on this quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Brown, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, do we start immediately and eat, or tell Please. us what we have here? Yeah, so these are our breakfast sausage. They'll be coming to retail soon. They're also in a lot of different food service organizations, such as Dunkin', Hardee's, Carl's Jr. Delicious, right? What I love about this product delivers on our promise of eat what you love, where you love it, but be healthy about it and do something great for the planet. People think... My mom always said, don't talk in your mouth. But it was delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Not available yet. People think, Ethan, you got a lot of competitors. Ethan, you, there's just, everyone's got in for you. You are not necessarily a traditional food company, though. Correct. You are something different. So therefore, they may be gunning against you, but they may not know who they're gunning against. Right. Thank you for asking. So we really are an innovation engine. And that's the way that we've always run the business over the last 11 years. We have a core platform across beef, pork, and poultry, and we're constantly innovating to close the gap between our products and the animal protein equivalent. The closer we get, the more and more consumers come into our brand. And so what's happening is the consumers are hearing all this information about whether it's the human health implications of high levels of meat consumption or the climate implications or natural resource or animal welfare. Every day they're getting some piece of information on it. They want to reduce their animal protein consumption. Right. We're making that easier for them by creating products that enable them to eat what they love, to continue to enjoy those traditions and occasions, but do it with a plant-based meat well, versus an animal-based meat. I had the pleasure of spending that with you eating truly delicious, fun. delicious Thank beyond meat with the chef. And it was a great night. I went home and Thank I told you. my kids. And my daughter is a vegan, yeah. and you know, she said, Dad, that's not at all. That's not what it's about at all. We like it because of what they do for the planet. Now, this must be a demographic that you own. Well, it's great. I mean, so if you look at the 40 and over set, a lot are coming in because of health, whether right. it's a doctor saying right. something about the heart or, 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 or cholesterol, et cetera. Uh, but the younger generation is the one that's really exciting. When we go to a college campus, the rooms are packed because there's an idea here whose time has come, and that's that you can separate meat from animals, and in doing so, you create a more sustainable planet, and you create something that's healthier for the human body. Now, we're not there yet. You know, we have our Manhattan Beach project in, in Los Angeles. We're continuing to make things better, but we are getting closer and closer, and that resonates with the consumer. I know McDonald's. Um, I, I told them, I spoke to them. I said, listen, guys, you're in Ontario. This has got to be every college uh, campus's dream, but I also know when I speak to the other guys in the same business, the actual franchisees, it's hard. They're not sure how to do it. But don't they, won't they be dragged, kicking and screaming in the end? Well, I think if you look at the innovative leaders, and so we've, we've been testing now with KFC, with McDonald's, with Hardee's, but we've also launched the chicken with chicken tenders. Like, yeah, absolutely. Launched with places like uh, you know A and W and, and Carl's Jr. Um, and then look at the Denny's and Del Tacos and Dunkin's, the Starbucks, and the Starbucks deal. in Canada, Subway in Canada. So the CEOs and the leaders of this sector that are, that are leaning in are seeing something among the consumer. The consumer doesn't want to go to some of their places for, for salad. They want to go to have those traditional things that they really enjoy, and that's the value proposition that we create. The other thing that you do that I like is that you don't stop with this, which is delicious, but you, even the packaging you care about. Yeah, yeah, so sustainability is massive for us. It's one of our driving forces. And if you look at the Beyond Burger, compare that to an animal protein equivalent. Right. 90% fewer emissions, 99% less water, 93% less land, about half the energy. So talk about young people hearing about that. You hear about the climate strikes that young people right. are doing, the, the flight shaming that young people are doing. There's an opportunity right. to make a decision 
at the center of your plate about what you stand for, what you don't. But there are still uh, questions and skepticism regarding the health benefits of your product. Yeah. So I think that's largely noise that's being uh, generated by incumbent uh, um, uh, industry groups. So if you look at the, uh, I just had two this morning, so I'll talk about the, the Dunkin' sausage, right? So that has half the fat. It has 44% less uh, saturated fat, 37% uh, <coughs> less um, sodium. It's got more protein and more iron. So that's really hard to argue with. It also is absent some of the things you're concerned about in meat, such as heme iron or um, uh, heterocyclic uh, amines, things like that. So it's an opportunity to have that product that you want to have, but maybe do it in a way that's healthier for your body. Ethan, one of the greatest hits we ever had on Mad Money was a company called White Wave. Yeah. And White Wave, it's, uh, it was spun off from Dean Foods, but it was almond milk. It was yeah. different kinds of milk. And uh, the story was, was that China, the milk's bad. Yeah. So in the end, then own bought this white wave for a, a, a triple. Yeah. Uh, I have to believe the Chinese have to be, when this thing clears, and it will because it's a billion and a half people, yeah. that this is their hope. Yeah, so if you think about, in the comments I made in our last earnings call, you know, if, if you're interested in, in, go back 20 years on Amazon as a small, profitable online bookseller, this is not the stock for you, right? I am very interested in what Amazon did in terms of reinvesting and continuing to grow. Right now is a moment in time for us. It's an opportunity for hyper growth. So I'm looking very serious at Asia. I've made a commitment that we're gonna be producing in Asia by the end of this year. We'll do that regardless of, I think, of this health epidemic occurring right now. But think about the swine uh, fever there. Right. So 50% of the herd was culled. We've forgotten about that already because of this next thing. Right. Uh, that's 25% of the world's uh, hog population. I came out of the fuel cell industry. If there had been a disruption to the internal combustion engine manufacturing infrastructure where 25% disappeared right. overnight, we'd be going bananas sure. trying to leapfrog and put hydrogen or electric drive technology in its place. That's our opportunity right now. We have to be active in China regardless of what's going on. You look at the EU, we're putting production in, in, in the Netherlands at the end of this month, we'll be up and running. So this is a time of hyper growth. I've ruled out nothing. We're looking, you know, we could potentially make acquisitions in the supply chain or adjacencies. We are doing everything we can right now to grab as much market share as we possibly can. That's the right focus for our business. Yeah, and if, you were, if, if it was hurting you, you would be discounting it. You're not. Yeah. I want everyone, this is the most, one of the, what may be the most transparent of the food group, but also consumer products. You should read this February 27th deck called Beyond Meat. Go through the conference call where, where Ethan actually has to defend himself. I don't know why, given the numbers. To analysts who want him to make money now, I want him to win. You can't win by making money. Ethan Brown, founder, president, CEO of Beyond Meat, BYND. I'll talk to you later. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.